Congress. While many are asking Congress to unseal proof of alien life to the American public, a Harvard team of researchers says they might already have some. They say microscopic debris at the bottom of the ocean floor could be from alien technology. And Harvard professor Avi Loeb led that mission to the ocean floor and joins us live now. Professor, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So, of course, the media can't resist the angle that these little metallic spherules might be evidence of alien craft on the Earth. Of course, that's the that's the leader. That's what the whole conversation is about. And yet it has pretty much absolutely nothing to do with the evidence that they found. The actual story is interesting. And let me go over very, very quickly. So Avi Loeb and his team were looking for retroactively. They're going through a, a NASA database of meteors that hit the Earth. And they were looking for ones that had characteristics that might indicate that they are interstellar, that they come from not our own solar system, from another solar system. The primary feature of that would be that it was traveling really fast. So fast, in fact, that it would escape the gravitational pull of the sun. So like, it couldn't have been from within our solar system. It had to have been something passing through our solar system. Okay, fair enough. They found one from 2014. They renamed it IM1, and they, they you know, tracked the uh, trajectory. They calculated like, all right, what, where did this come down? Uh, they figured it probably crashed somewhere in the ocean. They um, calculated the probable path that it took to get there. And then they went on a, a mission uh, to see if they could find any uh, remnants of that meteor. Um, they looked, they used uh, a magnetic kind of a dredging machine. So I guess it would pick up anything, you know, ferromagnetic. And what they found was in the, pa the calculated path of that meteor, more so than in control paths, they looked in other locations that weren't in the path, they found these very small iron spheres, uh, less than a millimeter, submillimeter iron spherules. Now, that's not unexpected uh, in that whenever anything burns up in the atmosphere or gets liquefied, um, because it's then in free fall, it just forms into a perfect sphere. And so we see that often in the aftermath of meteor impacts or you know, any you know, really small debris uh, that burns up and then rains back down. You know, it, it basically forms into a sphere, cools as a, as a sphere, and that's, that's what you find. So not surprising. Um, and so that, so, okay, fine. So as far as that goes, they said, all right, they make a pretty good case that that meteor was probably interstellar. Uh, I know that there have been, there's been some debate among astronomers about that, but let's say, okay, that maybe they won that argument and they, and they, and so far, according to their own evidence, it sounds like they found debris that's probably from that meteor because it was in that path more than control paths. Okay. I'd like to see that data. I'd like to see how, you know, did they really look enough for in other locations, you know, to see, you know, how common those spherules are. Um, but even if we buy that as well, then what they, sh what they, what they likely demonstrated is that uh, they found evidence of an interstellar meteor and they found the physical remains of that meteor. Okay. But we still need to confirm it. We need to confirm it with some more, some dating methods. They need to do a little bit more detailed analysis of the spherules themselves isotopic analysis, et cetera. That, that is still coming. The big leap, however, is going from that to this could be the, re, the remains of an alien craft, right? This was some kind of probe or ship or something that was sent to Earth and then eventually crashed uh, in, the, in the ocean, and we're seeing that. That is a massive leap that has n absolutely nothing to do with the data we have so far. But of course, that's what the media is obsessing about. So what are these little spherules? They're basically pure iron. They have only trace uh, elements in them, a little bit of nickel, trace other alloys, trace metals, meaning you know parts per million, you know, very, very tiny amounts. It's about as pure iron as you're gonna get, right? Um, so what does that mean? So you know, Loeb argues that well, that's a diff. You know, we, if this came from a meteor 
in, that originated in our own solar system, you would expect it to be a mixture of iron and nickel because that's more typical of the iron nickel meteorites that we have in this solar system. Fair enough. So you've just that's another line of evidence that suggests that it may be interstellar and not something from within our solar system. But again, he, he sort of encourages the leap from that to and be, that's so unusual that, you know, it's not like anything we know. So it may be an alien craft. It's like, yeah, but we're talking about pure iron. It's iron. So what are you saying? That the alien spacecraft was made out of iron? Right? It's not even made out of steel or some other more exotic material. It's iron? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. And we also know that there are definitely hypothesized sources of iron other than like the nickel iron typical meteor uh, asteroids that we know of. Uh, one possibility, for example, is that it, that these are the remnants of a supernova of a star that, you know, it that accumulated iron in its core prior to going supernova. That would be exotic, but it's still just a an astronomical source. That's it's these supernova iron bullets that got thrown out into the universe when the sun went supernova. That seems like a much more likely answer to me than it's some kind of an alien artifact made out of pure iron, which makes no sense. So that's again, the, that's the leap that that drives me nuts. And of course, that's you know, the fact that the, the the press is obsessing over that last complete, you know, massive leap in logic, not based on any real evidence, is very frustrating. It's being actively encouraged in my from what I've seen by Avi Loeb. Um, even though he's not making explicit claims at this point, he's saying, well, we got to study that possibility, you know, and he's putting it out there as a possibility. Complete nonsense. It's iron. It's just, that's all we have. That's it. Um, at the very most, we could say, we're not sure where this came from. And you still have iron balls at the end of the day. Uh, so the, the astronomy is interesting, as it often is. And always, it seems, whenever we get to the edge of our astronomical knowledge about a current phenomenon, somebody says, aliens. Maybe this new thing that we're not 100% sure what it is, is aliens. And so far, every time, it's been proven to be wrong. I'm not holding my breath on this one. It's pure iron, right? It's not impressive. I'm not, you know, I'm not holding my breath that this is an alien artifact. As awesome as that would be, admittedly, I would find that. Inc Imagine if we found a crashed alien spacecraft on the Earth, and that would be incredible. Um, so they're still going after the main, uh, the main chunk of that of that meteor. They think that they could find it. That would be great. Let's find it. Let's see what it is. Maybe it is the core of a dead star. That would be awesome, too. Just imagine that. I hope that the real astronomy here doesn't get lost in all the alien nonsense, which is almost certainly not true, given that it's, you know, iron. But I think I mentioned that a few times. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this one. But, you know, the, pr the way this is being promoted and presented in the media is just nonsense. There's no reason at this point to think this is an alien spacecraft. Thank uh you. -huh.